I fought the baby for a frozen hamburger patty the other day. <clears throat> Welcome, everybody, to the Bob and Katie Show. I'm Katie. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Bob. What's happening? I don't know. You weren't saying anything. I was I was getting ready. I was getting ready. Okay, check it out. Uh, this is probably going to be one of the most, I don't know, too much information or intimate episodes <laughs> oh my I gosh. think we have ever done. And this is a normal episode, not Bishop? Sure. Yeah, this is a normal episode. This is going out to everybody because I want everybody I, to be I just be want everybody to know I have no idea what's happening. Yes, right you now. do. As soon, you, as, no, soon as we get into what it, you'll know. About? We'll get there. We'll get there. But first, before we get to the personal, intimate stuff, I did have one story. Patreon.com slash The Bob and Katie Show. Are you doing a commercial? I don't know. I'm pretending to be you. You need to calm down. This is going to be great. Are you ready for the story? Yeah. Do you want to do a Patreon commercial? You can, you can no. Go ahead and do it. I, think I don't be fun. like doing no. commercials. Okay, I'll do it later then. All right. There was a lady. I think it was a lady. and She was house-sitting for somebody. Oh, God, this, this is not going to end well, is it? No, it ended, it ended it pretty well. Now, someone broke into the house while she was there. She heard the banging going on, and it was coming from one of the bathrooms. So she, you know, she bunkered down, called 911. Oh, my gosh. And uh, the police showed up. You know, they yelled at the guy, come on out. He was in the bathroom? He was in the bathroom. He's in there just tearing things up. Just, you could hear just bam, 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 bam. In the bam. bathroom? In the bathroom. What the heck was he looking for in the bathroom? I don't know. They couldn't figure it out. Now, I'm assuming eventually they were like, okay, we're going in to get him because he wasn't responding. They heard him and they're moving stuff around. They, they had to go in to get him. So the cops get ready. They ease up to the door. They let the guy know, you know, on the count of three, we're coming in. They bust into this door and you know what they find? The owners of the house dead. No, I'm joking. Uh, they had a room. <laughs> I was like, how were they making noise if they were dead? They had, they had one of those vacuum cleaners, the Roomba, and it had got into the <gasps> bathroom. Oh. Oh my god! And it was in there. Kidding me. It was in there, just trying to get out. It was boom, 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 just trying to get out, trying to get out. Oh yeah, scared the hell out of everybody. Oh my gosh! Is that amazing? Wow! That's it. So uh, a minute, a minute of non um, intimate that, stuff. I feel bad. I feel, I, I feel bad for that lady because how embarrassed was she? Oh, super embarrassed. But then again, how it's embarrassed were those cops? That thought there was somebody. Oh, there. and you know their adrenaline. Their adrenaline. Like, oh yeah, they probably had their guns out. Oh yeah, ready to go. Just to find a vacuum cleaner had gone haywire, and it was probably like, "Thanks, guys." <laughs> and then it just wanders off to clean the house. They open the door, and the Roomba just. I don't really know what a Roomba sounds like. Does I don't think it, it sounds like much. Like just a normal vacuum, just. Like, yeah, probably. I don't know. You can tell I don't have a Roomba. So I, we couldn't have a Roomba. I the things that get on our floor. Oh yeah! Oh, just yesterday, yesterday. Tell tell this story. This is good. I like the video you sent me. I had to I had to get ready to go, which is not a, a, an everyday thing. Uh, I don't leave the house much because it is such a hassle. So I feed the kids lunch, get the baby down for a nap. The oldest two are watching something on TV. They're all occupied, and I wait till you know they're like glued to the TV, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go hop in the shower. Get out the shower, come downstairs to check on them because they were being quiet. <sighs> they had gotten into the pantry where we keep the snacks. <laughs> I mean, it, it might as well have been a wild raccoon that came in our house and got in our pantry. There was open uh, peanut butter. Oh, I didn't see the peanut butter. They got into the peanut butter again. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, this one, it was like one of those little individual. Like it was like almond butter. You could oh, tell yeah, they started I saw eating that. it, it and it's really table. not that good. And they, they were, were like, "This mm, is gross." No. Nope. And then they got a hold of some instant coffee, which I mean is nasty on its own. And I think they tried to eat it, like a mouthful of it. I don't know what they thought it was. And then um, we sent them off to stay with your mom that night. And then they found a jar of bacon bits, and these bacon bits, m my God. I don't know what method they used to sprinkle them so evenly throughout the entire kitchen. I mean, it wasn't a pile, so it wasn't like it was dumped out. It was like it was carefully sprinkled about. Yeah, yeah. Separated. Sprinkled. sprinkled. But hey, 
it was in the kitchen. It didn't get on the carpet in the living room. Whatever. Now, you, that was say, like what you say whatever. I'm a little upset about it because... It was your bacon bits? It was my bacon bits. We just went and You just it. bought them, like, what, the day before? Yeah. And it wasn't like, oh, we're out of bacon bits. Let me go get some more. It was one of those situations where we kept forgetting to get bacon bits, and we have salad all the Does time. Does it crush your soul a little bit? Like, because this is it. When you have kids... Um, what did they fucking spread my 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 bacon bits all over the place? Yes, my soul is you crushed. You can't have anything. Anything. You cannot nothing. even have a jar of bacon bits. Yeah. That those kids are like, nope. And did they eat them? No. no. It wasn't like they just like ate the whole jar. No. no. They spread them about they the floor. They sprinkled them on the floor like landmines. Here's the here's the sucky part. And I know the bacon bits only cost like a dollar or something like that. It's the principle of the matter. No, here's here's the thing. Those were my bacon bits, okay? That's not how the children see it. Those were mine. If we decide not to take care of the children, they will die. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like these little humans are in a stage of their life that if we're not there and like the outside world doesn't intervene, they will perish. Yeah. If I was them, I would be kissing butt, trying to clean things. <laughs> I mean, like, we're... We, if only. Yeah. If only. Oh, oh. so anyway, the grand finale. Mm -hmm. I come around the corner, you know, I'm trying to step over bacon bits. And I find Reagan and Riley in the living room, still glued to the TV, like nothing ever happened. I mean, they didn't even turn and look at me. Their eyes never left the TV. They had a blanket spread out on the carpet. And there were three serving platters like that you would use for like a party full of chocolate animal crackers oh yeah they got the good china out yeah they did it up right i remember like, good i opened and fancy you know i opened the pantry the other night because you you had ordered all the groceries and went and picked them up and stuff and uh i saw this bag of animal crackers it was a gigantic bag it was there's a lot of like, animal crackers it was in their bag. bigger than like a bag of family okay, size like less than two Doritos. Bucks. yeah yeah and they were chocolate. And I remember looking at them going, mmm, well, hello there. But we can't They're really so have good. them on our diet, even though we did. Anyways, so, uh, yeah, I saw them like two days ago. So they didn't last long before these kids mm -hmm. got into them and just like don't over half the bag. They had a feast. I opened the pantry again yesterday. And this was after the incident. And I saw where you had scooped all of them up out of the platters and put them in like a Ziploc bag. Mm -hmm. Did you no, notice? I handed them a Ziploc bag. Oh, you I made them do it? I said, y'all, eat some of them and put the rest in this bag. I didn't even, I was like, I can't. Did you notice that someone had already gone in the pantry again and got into them? Because it was, the Ziploc bag was open. So they've already been back in there eating those cookies again. Of course. We're going to have to put a lock on the pantry. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, like, yeah. And I don't want to do that because I mean, like. doorknob thing on there. That's where the food is. You're not supposed to lock people away from the food. But I mean, like, this is what happens. I fought the baby for a frozen hamburger patty the other day. Don't tell me we don't need locks to lock up the food. He was trying to eat raw, frozen ground beef. How do we get him out of the freezer? I don't know. Do you think there's a uh, it's baby It's perfect child proof. height, and it's the pull-out drawer thing. It's so easy for kids. <sighs> Katie, what about those things you put on the drawers oh, down the, there? Oh, yeah, Do they stick? Work. Could yeah. we put those on the refrigerator? Heck, yeah, we can. Nailed it. Moving Ooh. on. All right. You want to you skip subjects now and get a I, little more? I feel more... like we need to buy stock in Munchkin brand. Yeah. Like, I, th I think that's the brand of the, all those locks that we use. <laughs> baby proofing is a joke, though. I'm serious. Most baby proofing products are a joke. Yeah. Not to mention it's boring to listen to people talk about. So let's move so, on. Yeah, okay. That's, oh, God, baby proof stuff. This, this is one of the intimate things that I want to talk to you about. Okay. This is a two-part question. One, when do you think... At, at what age do you think I'm going to start having a, a penis issues? And uh, part two of that question, um, if it happens, like, how do you feel? Are you, you being, personally like serious? Yeah, right I'm now? being serious. I, I'm turning. I'm my birthday's right, coming up, <clears throat> so I'm turning. I'm turning what thirty four this year? Am I turning thirty four? Uh, yeah, I'm turning thirty four. Tur uh, okay, yeah. So I mean, you know, you see commercials. Like, I'm going to hit that age one day or or not. I don't know. Like, what do you think? I don't know. How are we supposed to speculate on your penis? Like, hope it still works for a long time. It's kind of like the car. Like, you buy a car and you're like, 
hope it works for a really long time. Yeah, but then eventually you know, the spark plugs. It's important to me, and, but then you never know. Sometimes you get a lemon and it's yeah. just like a year later, like, ah, this piece of crap doesn't work. I mean, so who really there, knows? There are things that have changed with me that I'm not sure you know about. Like, uh, one of the things is, so when a guy pees, at the end of it, you shake, right? Like this. That's a beautiful demonstration. Yeah, like that. It's just just makes, like that. Just that violently and everything. Just just get it all yeah. off. So uh, if only it was that easy for girls. Just wave it. You could you could try to wave it. Just like you know, like get up on the get up. Because the shake like I feel just, uh, doesn't really like work. That. But if maybe if you do more of like a wave. And get some <laughs> <laughs> this is the pr- oh my god. Flow. Everybody people can't see we, we, for the first time <laughs> ever in our history, we're actually videotaping this podcast <laughs> and Katie just got up and danced. It was awesome. I'm so not smooth. Patreon.com <laughs> slash the Bob and Katie show. If you want to see the clip of Katie dancing just now, that is only going to be available on Patreon. I'm going to put some other stuff out for everybody. That was my crotch trying to dance. Yeah, you were you, like you had your crotch just right at the camera. I honestly forgot it was there. And Patreon. dot com <laughs> slash the Bob and Katie Show. That is going up. So usually listen, I'm free to like nobody will ever yeah. see this. It's okay. Everybody's going to see all this hand crap you're doing too. I always talk about it, but now they're going to see it when you talk. It's like you're conducting an orchestra. Well, you know, I do have experience of that. Thank you, you very much. Because um, hashtag band geek over here. Yeah, that's a hashtag I want to push. I'm re- representing North Brunswick High School, class of 01, baby. That was like 20 years ago. It was, it was like, long yeah, time I, don't, ago. I don't even want to talk about how many years ago <laughs> that I've been out of high school. Because the high school feels like an eternity. We were just talking about this. But like the years since then, I'm like, oh, holy crap, what happened? Yeah. Because when you're in high school, we talked about this the other night, when you're in high school, you feel like it takes so long. Because high school is its own miserable little ecosystem, you know? Right. It it is. It's like its own little world. Because you know, you remember back in high school what you thought was important, the things that people thought about you. How many people did you go to school with that you have not even laid eyes on since the day you graduated? The principal? The well, Facebook has my, changed yeah, that. Yeah, Facebook but, has changed that. The principal of my school thought I was both an idiot and a gang member. And a which, gang member? In which none what? of those none of those were true. None of them were true. I got in trouble. Uh, was it me or was it Victoria? I honestly can't remember. Um, because, you know, we used to have the stud belts because we, we were – we were punk rockers. This is- oh, yeah. We were the most redneck punk rockers you've ever seen. But we had our, you know, stud belts and the stud bracelets. And the cop at school would be like, you can't wear that. And I'm like, it's a belt. serious? It's a belt, dude. It's holding my pants up. Yeah. It's helping my butt crack not to show. Like, Yeah. <laughs> and there, there's there's nothing better than some Katie butt crack. Mm-mm-mm. That's sort of that's the same. Disgusting. That's sort of the same thing. <laughs> every, you're going, Mm-mm, and every other person in the, on the planet is going. Ugh. What's a nice clean butt crack? Know. You take care of it. Yeah, I, you do. You take you. really good care. I mean, of it. Yeah, take pride in that. Yeah, clean. Good old. Good, uh, we should move on. Yeah, okay. We, yeah, we should. Now, this that's sort of the same thing that happened to me. Now we were in. I was in a uh, fight. The good butt fight. Crack? No, not a butt crack. This is not a butt crack story. We're back on. Uh, I'm in a gang. We, I was in a uh, a punk rock band, Fight the Good Fight, and we were a Christian band. Why are you looking at me with the big eyes? Why are you shaking <laughs> your head? It's so I- funny to think of anybody thinking you were in a gang. Yeah, oh, we're gonna get there. We're gonna get Why there. Why is my microphone turning? Because What's wrong with it? because you are moving all over the place. Like your chairs clicking. You're moving things. I just want you to just sit. You still. won't let me shake my leg, and you won't let me tap on the table. That's I because we're to recording. Move. It's so Every hard. time you do some stuff, it shows up. So when you're over doing all this, all of it shows up. Okay. Now, we were in a Christian band. I was in a Christian band, Fight the Good Fight. And we were... Uh, Whatever. I was punk, in that band too. Punk. Now, one of the things we did was we had safety pins. It was a thing. Like, yeah. there were safety pins everywhere. How do Buttons, safety pins, yeah, I had the pins, word punk studs. spelled out in safety pins on the front of my jacket. Mm-hmm. And then on the back of my jacket... I don't know whatever happened to my jacket. I don't either know what happened to mine. I got this picture of Jesus on a cross. Like, I mean, like, it was kind of brutal looking, like mm-hmm. blood coming out and stuff. And I safety pinned it to the back of my jacket. Mm-hmm. Well, I get called into the office, and it's the principal. And she sits me down, and she's like, well, I wanted to talk to you about your out-of-school activities. And I'm like... What? What? 
What do you, what do you mean? Well, your affiliation with different groups around the community. And I'm lost. I, I was like, I don't know what you're, what are you talking about? And she goes, we've noticed a lot of kids with uh, safety pins in their clothes. And I'm oh like, oh my goodness. Okay. And we're just curious what you call your gang. <gasps> oh and my I said, God. I said, you think I have a gang and what we do is wear safety pins together? <laughs> I said, I'm not, I'm not oh in a gang. God. I said, I'm not, I'm not in the safety pin gang. I'm, I'm not. And then I stood up and I turned around. I was like, this. This is your savior, Jesus Christ. Is that what you said? Yeah, I did. I was like, I'm not in a gang. I said, I'm in a Christian rock band. And she goes, oh, well, we're just going to have to keep an eye on things. I said, you should definitely keep an eye on things, but this isn't one of them. I got pulled over one time because my car that I had, I had like stickers all over it. And a cop pulled me over and like was asking about my stickers, you know, kind of like the same situation, searched my car. I, there was three other people with me, I believe, three or four other people with me. I, I had a full car, and we all had to get out while he searched my car. Yeah, profiled. Oh, yeah. I was, okay, I was definitely profiled. We gave him a reason. It's fine. Let's circle around to the intimate stuff again. Now, I told you <laughs> that something had changed with my manhood that maybe okay. you, didn't, you didn't know about. Did you uh, trim and I didn't notice? Or did, did I trim it? No. No, I got that did 70s you, bush you, Did you manscape? On. No, I didn't manscape. You just saw it last night. What are you talking about? I'm sure you would. I mean, listen. All right, here we go. We're going to start back over. When a guy gets done peeing, he shakes. All right. Oh, yeah. That's what we were talking about like a long time ago. Well, I reached this point that like shaking wasn't enough. I I don't know. Like, are you leaking? Well, I mean, like I can if I don't take care of it. It's weird. Are like you I, leaking? I don't Do know. Do we need to buy you adult diapers? I, maybe. I'll buy them for you. You buy me you've diapers. Bought, yeah, you've bought me um, like period products before. So. I buy period products all the time. No, I'm not leaking, but I could if I didn't do like an extra step. So I have this extra step I have to do now in the bathroom. And it's, I'm pretty sure. It's I just because avoid of my age. jumping jacks and sneezing and yeah. laughing and jumping on trampolines and things. And that helps me not to pee. Yeah. But it happens to you. No, it's not that. I'm not peeing myself. There's just, yeah, you know, okay. a little it's bit, okay. a little bit gets, okay. I'm not, I'm, I don't pee myself, Katie. I don't pee in my pants. I promise. Listen, it happens no, to the best there's, of it. there's this large tube, right? That's right. I said it was large. No, no, the tube, I think some gets in the tube itself and like the shaking is not getting it all out now. So like what I have to do is sort of like when, when you're brushing your teeth, and you have the toothpaste and like, you know, you're, you're almost out of toothpaste. So you kind of like squeeze it a little bit like, like from the bottom. Milk it? Like you got to milk the pee out? No, no. I mean, not. it's not like milking. It's just, you know, just one little quick, you know, a little bit just to make sure. Like Gogurt? Yes. That was a great example. Just like Gogurt. I Gogurt peeing. That's what I do now. You know, you shake it, you know. The, like, do, do the Gogurt. Yeah. And then just, just like a little, a just hand. a little. Just a little, little, we'll little, make, we'll little make strike. It, we'll make it a, a new thing. Gogurting. Yeah. Like Googling. Yes. Yeah, so when you get old, you start gogurting that, that, that manhood. That's right. Yeah. We Intimate. need to contact uh, Marion Webster and see about mm-hmm. adding that to the dictionary. Now, maybe I'm aging a little bit faster than you. You look so much younger than me constantly. You take good care of yourself. But when it comes- <laughs> I'm glad you think so. <laughs> when it, when it comes to that sort of stuff, you have one coming up because the doctor filled us in on it. Remember that a couple oh years ago? I don't, your, no, your cervix stuff? No, I don't even want to go there. Do you know? Just in like the past month, I've had like two mammograms, a pelvic exam, a transvaginal mm-hmm. ultrasound. I have had so many tests like that. I have no sympathy for you. I I can't even I'm say, not asking for I can't sympathy. Even, I, I don't even have sympathy for you and your go girding your penis to get your pee out. I've had no. Maybe if you could no. figure out the like female version of gogurting, then you wouldn't have to do all these mammograms and all these like spread your legs up and let's go inside with our your hard hat. Mammograms and- have nothing to do with your pee. Oh. That's your boo. Oh yeah, yeah. What's the other one called? The thing the other thing you had to do? A transvaginal ultrasound. Yes. A, a pap smear. Yeah, that's we, we talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. It always amazes me, like, because I've I've been in that with you before. Not not when you're not pregnant. When you're pregnant, I always go with you. But like they put like a a strap on their head with like a light 
and they have these tools. It looks like someone fixing to go mining is what it looks like. And they, they stick the thing in the cave and it, you know, it opens up a little <laughs> bit and they go inside and they're like, hello world. It's like Narnia in there and they reach in and they like shake things up and take some stuff out. And make my, sure it's oh okay. my gosh. One of my favorite things. And all of that is scientifically accurate. Everything I just described. One of my favorite things is, is talking about pap smears with our teenage um, nieces and it, it's um, making them uncomfortable. Yeah, your sister and I, we we got to telling her daughters who are who are teenagers about pap smears and, and what happens, and just the total look of horror in their eyes. Going, they do what? How far does it open? Like, it was. It's like a tent and a zipper. Oh, it's Zzz. great. <laughs> you step inside and like camp out for the night. Because I, like, I remember, like you know, whenever I was young, like it was. Oh my god, it was terrifying. But now, like that, I have children. It's just like, all right, here we go. Right. <laughs> Get undressed from the waist down. Hey, at eventually least- you'll open it up and a person falls out. <laughs> <laughs> at least the doctor's office I go to, you know, because when, when when you do a pap smear, usually they do a breast exam too. And I've many times having to war. war have, I've. Whoa, I can't get my words. I've you need had to, calm down. to Breathe, wear this paper vest. Yes. So they can get, you know, it opens, but right. it like it covers nothing, especially for a larger person. Yeah. It's nothing. So the doctor's office. They're not office, that large anymore, though. Well, the doctor's office I go to, now they give you like a t shirt. It's mm-hmm. a plain t shirt and it's, you know, kind of big. And, you know, when it comes time, they just reach up your shirt. But it's much more pleasant than a paper vest. Right. So, and sometimes you get like the actual real sheet instead of the large paper napkin to cover your genitalia. That's that's nice. That's nice. I'm glad to see that with all the technology advancements. So you know they they've they're they're still relying on paper napkins to cover your body yeah. at the doctor's office. <laughs> can I just tell you something? Yeah. Uh, and we can cut this out if you want to. You've lost a lot of weight. Oh, so have you. You and I've I have lost exactly sixty pounds. Right, and you and I together have lost sixty pounds just this year, like yes. just recently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you look like a different person. It's it's wild. It's wild. I don't know how to take that. I I mean, like you can take it positively or <laughs> negatively. It, it, like I mean, whatever you know. Because you know, some people get real skinny, and not that I'm real skinny, but you know, some people lose a lot of weight, and you go, Ooh, too, much. too much, too much, too much. Back and on, they back just on, look yeah. sickly. Yeah. And like, like they've just been like no. strung out on crack for the last year. Well, I don't. You're not to that point. I, yet. I know I'm not to that point yet. <laughs> I'm just saying. So oh, speaking yeah. of genitals, I hope that that's what you you were not referring to. Oh, you look different. No, like, no, 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 no. I, I'm just saying. Like, all right. So last night we were doing the intimates together. And oh my god! Like, what, what? I'm not going to go into detail. I'm just saying we're married. We have a bunch of kids. People know. Do you think people are? are do you think people actually think when we had the last kid, they were like, "Oh, well, they're not going to have sex anymore. They're done. They just they just did it." No, yeah. The last one. What? It, I love Reese to death. I love him to death. But what meant to happen? It was an accident. You know. It, you did. That's that's mm-hmm. life. We still have sex. But I was looking at you last night because you know that's what you do. And like, <laughs> holy crap, you're so skinny looking. It's wild. Well, thank you. Like, I was like, oh, yeah, it was, it was turning me on. Not that you didn't turn me on before. I'm going to stop. We're going to switch subjects. I, I think this is probably the most uncomfortable yeah? episode. It's a good thing we're not doing this one naked. We normally record naked. No, we And uh, we got the camera on now, so. I have something. Okay, let's hear it. I've had something weird happen to me. Well, not weird. So we drive up. Yeah, you did. We, we drive. Are we still talking about last night? Stop. No. Okay. We drive a, a Ford Flex. I have a Ford Flex. Me too. And it's it's funny because it's it's been referenced a lot of times. It's it's a it's a mom car. You know, um, what's the movie? With- I think you're the only one that says that. No, because that movie with Will Ferrell and he's talking about how like good of a, a stepdad he is, and he drives a Flex. Okay. Remember? Well, if if Will Ferrell says it's cool, anyway, it's cool. and I've seen like parody video. What was that one that you showed me something recently? Where, oh, the dad song. I don't remember where he drove a flex. Yeah, and they all anyway. Wore cord- it's such cargo a pants. It's yeah. It's it's a mom. It's my mom mobile, right? I mean, it's a sexy mom mobile, and I love it. Mm-hmm. But it's a mom mobile nonetheless. The other day, I'm out on the highway, and I see this car way back there behind me, and I'm I always go a little above the speed limit anyway. Um, but it's like flying up to me, right? Breaking the and law. it gets Breaking closer. And I was like, oh my God, why are they going so fast? And I assumed they were going to go around. 
But it turned out it was another Ford Flex, the same color as ours, newer because ours is kind of old. Um, but it flew up behind me and then it just hung out there. I just wanted to ride. Yeah. It's like. I missed you, sister. Like, you know, it's like this bond. Like, yeah. I got you. And then it happened again, like a week later with a different Ford Flex. This time it was a white one. And most people don't know, our Flex has a trailer hitch because not only do we have a whole bunch of churin, but sometimes we got to haul things because you just do. Well, I was again out on the highway and uh, this Ford Flex that is pulling a trailer same exact thing happens. They fly up behind me. I mean, they weren't going as fast, but they get behind me and they just hang out there for the longest time. Like, we're just like hanging out together. Like, twice within like this two This story weeks. makes me sad. It's like, people, <laughs> I'm sure they probably have children, you know? Because, I mean, it's a big vehicle. It's so good that I, I, we bought a second car finally. But it's like because you need to get out of the house more because what you're telling me right now, like, and you're you're genuinely excited, and and I'm not saying that that's not okay. That's cool. You can be excited about whatever you want to be excited about. But I feel like lame. you spent such a large amount of time, like, I had to give out there context. by your like out there driving mm-hmm. around and stuff that you're like, oh, there's other cars like mine. There's other people. <laughs> oh, I'm my. fitting in. I'm fitting in with people. Like that's what it sounds like. Is that what I sound like? A little bit. Yeah. Oh man, that's sad. That's all Can I'm you saying. just cut out my story? No, because it was. I don't good. want to sound desperate. No, it was a good story. It's not that I, I don't think you sound desperate. It's just like, you know, if okay, the cracker effect. I've always believed in the saltine cracker effect. I made this up. I made this up. This is what it is. You go, you eat a saltine cracker, right? And you're like, all right, it's a saltine cracker, nothing special. But if you go three days without any food, and then you eat a saltine cracker, that is the best. Oh, cracker yeah. you've ever eaten in your entire life yeah. well you went three days metaphorically you know you spent a whole lot of time this past year just in the house the death jetta didn't work i was driving into different states every day so you didn't have a vehicle you know you didn't get out much what if i was like i started a gang we're gonna be the ford flex gang boom whatever makes you and happy. we gonna wear safety pins whatever makes you happy you better not be wearing no safety pins because the oh, kids the gang? way the, the kids jump oh. on you you're gonna get stabbed no, I, that's the way I think about things now. Yeah. I look at something, and before I think, oh, that's pretty, I think, what what will happen? What, what will the will kids my, do? In what way can they yeah. harm themselves or us or the house? We were Easter shopping, and you picked something up. What no, you it? picked up jump ropes. You go, oh, what about jump ropes? And I'm like, oh, that might be fun. I don't think they can do it, but they could try. I think yeah. they would have fun trying. And you go, they'll probably just hit each other. Right, and we put the jump ropes back. But you picked up, you found it over in the uh, the like Easter section, you found these little gumball machines, and they were so oh, cute. Gumball machines. And you were they like, were oh, look at these. It's a little gumball machine. And then how did they do it? It's so good. We need to be the gumball And I immediately looked at you and went, you are not giving our children gum. It will be in their hair and on the floor and everywhere. And you look down at them, and I just saw your soul just <laughs> chip away a little bit. No, but I knew you because, were right, and oh, I yeah, put them absolutely. back immediately. Absolutely. These kids have no idea how many things that would have been really cool that they could have had, but we like we couldn't get it because – We can't just, even have bacon bits. Are you kidding me? Oh, we have to get some more bacon bits. We're just going to have to put them higher in the pantry. I'm running out of high grounds around mm. here, you know? Okay, I've got a question for you. We're getting back into personal information. Oh, you... Secrets. Are you ready? Do you have a secret to tell me? No. I want oh. you to tell me one. I don't think I have No, 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 no. Let me... Hear me out. You mean make it up? No, no, no. I don't want oh. you to make it up. Listen to my question first. Okay. When you were growing up, tell me something that you kept from your parents. You know, like maybe something you had in your room or something you didn't oh, want your parents to know about. Oh, my God. <laughs> like something... This is scandalous. Yeah. Give me something like wild. Something that you... I well, I was a goody goody though. I wasn't. I wasn't a bad girl. Mm-hmm. Um, me and my sister did sneak out a few times, but I didn't do anything bad. Mm-hmm. I was friends and dated the guy across the street, mm-hmm. and he had a younger brother that was the same age as my sister, and we <laughs> snuck out. We just hung out. I think we like hung out on the trampoline or something. Like I didn't even like sneak out and go like smoke cigarettes or make out or it was really a, yeah you didn't smoke cigarettes or anything when you were a teenager i'm sure i probably tried them 
but I I didn't want to. I, you I are making to. me feel like such a horrible person. I'm, I'm telling you, I was. Like, I can. I could have. I was a, a goody goody. I could have a bag of things that I, I just. Really I was. just like hid from my parents. I was, no, I was. I was a good girl. Um, I mean, I hid like I didn't tell my mom, my parents when I lost my virginity. Can I? It, would you share the age with the audience? I was 18. You were 18? Yeah. I think I might have knew that. Wow. I was not 18. Yeah, because you was bad. Yeah, I was, I was. I was bad. I was a good girl. You know what, though? I, I, I won't use their name because I'm not sure if they'd be okay with this. They probably would be. Um, I was with you one night, and we had gone to Perkins with some friends. Mm-hmm. And, th- you know, this is one thing that I'm not going to say I hid from my parents, but I didn't volunteer the information at uh-huh. all. Uh, so we get out of Perkins and I think we were going to go to the beach or something. I don't know. But, uh, one of the friends who was like one of your great friends at the time. I believe um, you're referencing my 17th birthday. Oh, do you know the story I'm about to tell you? Yeah. So I'm in the back seat with this girl and we're not like together or anything. We're just in the back seat together because neither one of us could drive. And we're talking and all of a sudden I see her eyes get the size of like silver dollars, right? And at this point, she's no longer looking at me, but she's looking like past me, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, I got to find out what's going on. And I slowly turn my head and right in my window is a vagina, (laughs) just right in the window. And I would like, at first I'm like, wait, what? Because you can't, you can't process that, you know, you just can't process that information. <laughs> you can't do it. It's right there in the parking lot. Yeah. And uh, it was your friend. She was changing to go to the beach and she had no shame. She, I, I couldn't tell you the amount of times she changed clothing in a parking lot. Yeah. I mean, like not in the car. Like she was outside the car in a parking lot on the, yeah. on College Road in Wilmington. <laughs> you know, like people definitely saw her. It def- people definitely saw her. Uh, that was the same night that my mom, I think, told me I had to be back by like 11 or something or n- n- 10 or something. I don't know what time it was, but I didn't do it. Now, when you watch TV and, you know, kids are late, what happens on TV is they sneak into the house, you know, mm-hmm. and they go into the living room and like mom and dad sitting in a chair by the fire waiting. In the dark. Yeah. They flip the light on. Where have you been? That's not how my family works. My mom was like, be home by 11. And at 11.10, she locked the doors and they went to bed. And I didn't have a key to get it's inside. It's funny because, like, your parents, to be such nice people, they are freaking cutthroat, man. That's where I get it. <laughs> That's where I get it. You went home. Oh, well, you sleep it outside. I slept on the porch that night. Yeah. Teach you to be home. You want to sleep in the house? You be home when I say. <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember. But I used to sleep on this futon, not like one of the couch futons. It was like a Japanese futon. It was like a little soft chair on the ground. You could unfold it and lay Mm -hmm. on it. It was on the front porch. I don't know if my mom put it out there for me or if I'd put it out there, but I know that I slept on it that night. And it was normally in my room. I think my mom might have put it on the front porch. Like, just in case, here's something to sleep on. Oh, yeah, I couldn't get in. And, like, I wasn't going to wake my parents up in the middle of the night and go, hey, look, I'm home. Can y'all let me in? F that noise. I was just going to sleep on the porch and deal with it in the morning. Yeah, so what happened the in the night. morning? I don't, I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't, like, a super bad kid. Like, I did some stuff like that, you know. I might have smoked cigarettes every now and then. Um, definitely the sex thing. When I, I started that kind of young. Um, but I wasn't really a bad kid. I didn't do a lot of bad stuff. So I don't think I got in a lot of trouble, you know. Um Plus my, you know, I love my sister to death, but my parents had their hands full with my sister. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was fine. I had that effect of like the, the baby sort of, I wasn't the baby, but I was still sort of younger, you know, and I got, I got different treatment. The same thing. I got treated different than my older sister and my younger brother gets treated different than I got treated. Mm -hmm. It it got easier and easier as it went along for sure. Uh, something that I hid from my parents, um, I used to set my, when I was coming into like, you know, my teen years, we had cable and we had HBO and like, there were times that like I'd set my alarm for like one o'clock in the morning so that I could watch a dirty movie. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like how, how crazy is that? That's weird. Right? I mean, I think that's probably normal teenage boy behavior, Yeah, I guess. I'll tell you something. Tell me if you think this is normal teenage boy stuff. Do you remember pay-per-view? Yeah. They still have pay-per-view. Yeah. Uh, and you, there's like 
Playboy channels. Yeah. Well, now if you go to the Playboy channel and, you know, it, it's just like a – not a preview, but it's like, oh, this is the Playboy channel. Call this number to yeah. unlock it. Well, back in the day, it was just scrambled. Like your – the adult channels and, and pay-per-view channels were scrambled. Like it just looked kind of snowy. No, it was like multicolored and like <laughs> oh. moving around and stuff, and you could hear it. Yeah, but you just couldn't see it. Well, I remember like being like a thirteen-year-old and turning it to that channel because I knew I was like, "Oh, there's naked people doing things on this channel." Oh my god! But you couldn't see anything. But every now and then, if you got lucky, the picture as it was morphing would like like a part of it. Would like oh come my together, gosh. and you could you be like, oh, a nipple! I saw a nipple. Did y'all see that? Y'all see a nipple? Oh my god! Like, how many hours of your life do you think you spent it wasn't like scanning that. this no. like pixelated snowy picture just to get a glimpse of a boob? It wasn't a snowy picture, just, so you I, I just say you glimpse? Yeah, a glimpse. I just, a glimpse. I just made up a word. You apparently never done it because it's not a snowy <clears throat> picture. It's like it's almost like a kaleidoscope. Uh huh. I mean, it's, it's everything, it's like everything's in color and it just got, it's getting jumbled up. Yeah. So it's not snowy. It's not like when the cable goes out, but, uh, no, it wasn't like hours or anything like that, you know? And I, it, like the, there were times like friends would come over and be like, Oh, check this channel out. If you wait long enough, you can see a nipple on there or something like that. Oh so. my gosh. Um, so that's what teenage boys do when they hang out, huh? Oh my God. Yes. As soon as you turn like 12 <laughs> and 13, your main goal is to make more people. That's. <laughs> Like, you're just like, oh, look at all the females. We have to make more people. There's not enough people. You feel like, like we should make people, right? Like yeah, we should make people. As a 13-year-old girl, I yeah. was like, look at this nail polish. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, you see that girl looking at her nail polish? We're fixing to make more people. Oh, my God. <laughs> and it never goes away. Well, I believe it. No, I tried to make more people last night with you. Oh, my God. Will you stop? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, I wasn't trying to make more people. I was, you know, just the process. It's oh, my goodness. Practice, right? It's just practice. Okay. Now, speaking of nudity, wow! I want you to give me two things other than sex. This is non-sexual. <clears throat> two things. One, something that you like to do naked. That's not a shower or sexual. And two, something that you definitely wouldn't want to do naked. Okay. So first, something I do want to do naked. Yeah. Or that you like to do naked or that you do naked. That's not sexual. I don't want to take this in a sexual direction. <laughs> okay. I can tell you. I can tell you something. Okay. I'll tell you one thing I like to do naked. That's not sexual or showering. It has... Okay, so in the summertime here in good old North Carolina, it is like humid mm-hmm. and muggy. It's gross. Hot. Yeah, all the time. And sometimes you get out of the shower and it's just steamy and you're trying to like get dressed and get ready and, you know, like blow dry my hair, put makeup on. It's hot. It's hard to do when you're hot and sweaty. So we have a ceiling fan in our bedroom and I like to turn it on high and then I'll just like lay on the bed and like just ah it feels wonderful oh, so you just get on the bed naked and like splatter, yeah you like, your legs and your arms like you splattered like against the wall out like this oh god i fell out of the chair lady. And, like, and it, it like turned the fan on high and it's amazing oh, that's cool yeah okay i have something similar to that, <laughs> Is that I don't, it might be lame i don't know uh one thing that i like to do like after a like a long day like or a, like a hard day you know i'm gonna go take a shower or whatever like i'll I have to peel my clothes off because it's been such a hard, mm-hmm. long working day. I'll uh, – this is embarrassing. I didn't realize this would be embarrassing. I will spread my legs like just a little bit, you know, just to get like some airflow and just kind of sway a little bit just to get air into those places that ain't had air all totally day long. I totally get it. I think that's probably how some women feel yeah. about like underneath the boob. Right oh, yeah. There. Like you take your bra off at the end like, of the night. Like, oh, my God, the boob sweat mm-hmm. under there. Like sometimes you just got to like lift them up and just – like get some air mm-hmm. up in there and it's – yeah, it's magical. Oh, yes. Magical. It's the same kind of feeling as like like that the back behind your knee. You know, like if you touch back behind your knee, it, you know, it's, a, it's, it's some sensation weird. But if somebody else rubs that little crease in the back of your knee, it feels good. <laughs> it's going to make me laugh just thinking about yeah. it. <laughs> okay, something that you, you don't want to do naked or that you've done naked and like it was a bad idea. I've not done this, thank God. Okay. I think I saw it on a movie, and I don't, I can't think of the movie, but there was a girl, and she was like running away from somebody. She was like kidnapped or something. She was escaping, and she was running through the woods, right. and she was like naked, and things was like, oh, oh that's you a know, good like one, yeah. branches, and you're at her feet. She had no shoes on. I, I don't like walking out on the front yard without my shoes on. Mm-hmm. Like my feet sensitive, but I don't want to run through the forest without clothes. That sounds painful. So one thing that I don't recommend, um, because it, I've done it, 
is, uh, when I was younger, uh, I was still a teenager. Um, I was probably not even 18 yet. I did the intimates in the forest. You told me it couldn't be sexual related. No, no, no. The fun thing that you like to do. The fun thing. I didn't want that to be. I didn't want you to be like, oh, I like having sex. I thought you. I thought you said neither thing. Whatever. It doesn't matter. The the point. Whatever. This, you're cheating in this, at your own game. In Bob. this situation, it's not the sex. Oh, you that can was bend the, the rules to make it sure, justified I made up the for game. you. Yeah, I made the game up. I can bend the rules. In Nobody's this situation, in that game. I'll cheat the that the movie. sex part of it isn't the meat of the story. It's the being naked in the forest part. That's what I don't recommend because I think you stole my idea. Maybe I said I didn't want to be naked in the forest. That wasn't going to be my idea, but when you said the forest, it made me think about what had happened to me. But I thought this had to be something like theoretical, not something that you've actually done. Uh, this could be theoretical for somebody. Should I just not tell anybody the story? Should I just hold it back now? No, you got to tell it now. Okay. <laughs> uh, we got poison ivied. Yeah, that's what you get. I it you was naughty boy. It was all over her back. Like the whole backside of her back. And for me, it was all over my calf. It was my left calf. It swole up. It was really, really horrible. So hanging out in the woods. That's what you get. I'm not yeah. allergic to poison ivy. Yeah. Hanging out in the woods naked. I think I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to say that you you definitely chose the correct thing. <laughs> That's something. You, you, you're nuts. I think it's about time for us to wrap the show up. We have one more discussion. And this discussion is the reason or the the idea I had behind it being like personal and intimate themed. Uh, you and I go out of our way not to talk about like deep family stuff. Like every family yeah. has things that mm-hmm. happen that's – I'm not maybe not the, – the word embarrassing might not be the, the word, but you're just like, oh, 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 you know what I mean? Just like some of those things. Uh, there's stuff that happens that we feel, you know – we don't want to paint people in a bad light. We don't want to talk about people. But this thing happened, and it was so crazy that I'm like, we have to break this rule. We have to talk about this. Okay. What are, uh, I like because there's so, we have large family on both sides. On I mean, your family, my family, and and there's like just so much going on all the time. Like every, I don't even know. I think I might know. My my brother was dating a girl. Oh, this this story. Okay. Do we say her name? <clears throat> we no. We're no, not going to say well, your name. We're not. We're both. Let's call yeah. her. Let's give her. Let's give her a name. Okay. Carol. Carol. No, because no. I no, because I know someone named Carol. Okay. That's weird. Um, I don't. I I don't know. Jane. Jane. Susan. Susan. I don't know. How about Jessica? Jessica. Yeah, let's go with Jessica. Okay. Okay, Jessica. Uh, we're not, we're, we're not going to use your name, your real name. Um, but I can tell you that both of us are pretty aggravated with you. And, and I understand in the big wide world of things ever, there's two sides to every story. So I'm not going to say that our side is the right side. I'm just going to (laughs) say it's our side. And, and if you would like to, you are more than welcome to call our voicemail and leave your side, and I promise to you I will not edit it. If you call and you leave your side of the story, I will play it for everybody to hear. I don't want to talk to you. I, I'm not going to invite you on the show. But if you want to call that voicemail, and I'll give you the number. We have the number. And anybody else can uh, call and leave voicemails or ask questions or anything you want to. Here's the number. You ready? 910 294 910 Oh nine five one. You can call that twenty four seven. It's a direct so hotline. You've right been to the like Bob and ranting, show. and nobody knows okay. why. You're why don't upset. you lead it? Because I'm. I've got such a personal <laughs> tie to this, and I shouldn't. I shouldn't because I should have nothing to do with my brother's relationship to some girl. And let me tell you what. Well, that's not true. She's she's older. She's an older lady. It's not. But but the way that she's acting. Is like a girl, I think she's older child. than I am. Okay. I think. I'm not sure. And so you explain, your brother is 10 years younger than me. Right. So you, let's, you ex- we could start there. You explain to me. Um, We're not here to insult anybody, so don't no, do that because no. it's going to be real easy to go into an insulting thing. I'll let's I'll just tell the Keep story. Okay. Your brother was dating a girl. Mm-hmm. Um, they dated for maybe six months yeah, or so. Yeah, for a little while. Yeah, yeah. Um, not an extended period of time. It's, you know, about six months, give or take. And they broke up recently. And it was very, very short. Very, very shortly thereafter, she was 
posting, things on Facebook that would leave your mind open to question if she was trying to insinuate that she was with child. N- right. So naturally, any of us who know your brother and know that they just broke up um, are like, what, do what? What? What's Is going on she here? pregnant? What's now, going on here? For me... Your aunt was the first one to see it. And then yeah. I believe she contacted your mom. Right. And then it and kinda- then it spread out and ultimately everybody came to me because everybody knows how I am. And I was just like, I'm gonna ask her. So she put this this post on Facebook, public Facebook, you know, so everybody could see it. And it was supposed to be like she was having a conversation. And uh I think it said like her dad said something about, Oh, we better get pickles. Or something like that. And she was like, oh, and I'll take the ice cream, too. Because yeah, it was something about pickles and ice cream. Because people make the joke about pickles and ice yeah. cream being something. It was pregnant. obviously yeah. meant to lead you to believe a certain thing. So I commented and was like, are you pregnant? That's all I said. Straightforward. Very simple. Yeah. Are you pregnant? And she didn't answer me. But yet other people posted stuff below me and she responded to them. You know of what course. I mean? Well, I believe you made contact with her and your sister made contact with her. Several people made contact with her at different times. Wanting Trying to, to know figure out. Because, like, yeah. I mean, your brother has a right to know. And if, you know, if she is, obviously he has a right to know. And I think as an extension, his family deserves to know if there's a child right. coming. And she wouldn't answer anybody. That's the wouldn't problem. Wouldn't say yes or no. Right. Like, now, this is this is how it all kind of unfolds. At, at this point, you know, I did that, but then I didn't really think about it again. Like, I kind of left it because my my brother's relationship with this woman really doesn't have a lot to do with me. Yeah, but now, she kept posting more things. Yeah. Who cares about that? This is what we're going to talk about right now. My mom, we were at my mom's house, and she came in with my sister, and she made a comment. She was like, oh, if anybody asks if I'm sick or anything like that, just let them know I'm okay. Apparently, somebody misconstrued some information. Oh, and they thought your mom had been in the hospital or something. And no, your mom had been home all day. She was fine. Now, me being the immature childish person I am, I heard this and I immediately You went, always be messing with I, your mama. Too, I immediately went to Facebook and made a post that said, <clears throat> please keep my mom in your prayers. And that's all that I put. So I just I just let Facebook well, do its thing. Well we know? were having the whole family, <laughs> your whole family, we were all together and we it was kind of a joke um about people posting very vague things on Facebook yeah. and then this came so it was like this whole like day long joke ongoing joke conversation whatever and what you know did, and th- things with with uh, his ex-girlfriend what did we and, name her again is it jessica <clears throat> jessica okay so and i about oh my god how people post like yeah the vegas things sometimes so i put that post up you know like please keep my mom in your prayers and it, uh what was and that? oh you know what somebody will post something very vague and then you know some somebody's gonna ask and right. they go oh well just pm me yeah, no. Whatever. God, that crap bugs no. me. Sorry, go ahead. So Jessica, uh, that's the name we settled on, right? Jessica yeah. puts, she comments on my post and she says, oh no, what's wrong? And when she said that, it made oh, no, me go, didn't, it made me go, oh, oh, girl. She never answered my question. So I responded, oh, she thinks you're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> because I don't care. <laughs> you Okay. What happened? Did you swallow some air? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> that was great. Either some air or spit went down the wrong way. <laughs> I'm not I'm not cutting this out. Okay. Now and then, <clears throat> sorry. Sorry. Yeah, so I I That's not nice. I'm very straightforward. And I've reached this point in my life where I'm almost to the point where like I don't care anymore. I get it. By the time I'm eighty, I'm age. gonna be that guy that mm-hmm. just says that I totally old get why old people just like Pfft. Yeah. Now I get it. And then I responded. I was like, I was like, oh, and she goes, oh, she said, oh, that was her response. And then I went, oh, so you could read this one. You couldn't answer my last question. And she said, I don't know what question you're talking about. So I went to her page and oh, went, the original. yeah, I went to the comment that I put in there that said, are you pregnant? And I tagged her and I said, this one, you know what she <laughs> says? She responds back and she goes, well, what does the post say? And I said, the post doesn't say anything. It just hints at something. And I'm asking you, are you pregnant? <clears throat> and then she responds back and she goes, oh, well, a hint's a hint's a hint. Like you still haven't said 
Yes it's, it's really, or no. It's really not a matter um, to joke around. And and I'm, this is me. You and I make inappropriate jokes like all the time about things we shouldn't joke about. With. But I'm sorry. That's like crossing a line. At least to me and most other normal people. That's like way crossing a line. All right. I took screenshots just in case. Oh, my God. Do not go into reading every day. I'm not. I just want to read this conversation because she private messaged me. And, uh, oh, Jessica, by the way, I'm a podcaster, so nothing is private with me. Just want to throw that out there. And just so everybody knows, I don't care about her feelings because I don't really like every, how everything unfolded. But I did go to my brother and ask him if it was okay that we <clears> talk <throat> about this. So before anybody goes, oh, y'all just put people's business out there. She put the business out there. But I did confirm with my brother if he was okay with it. And he said, yeah, sure, whatever. So she sends me a message. with This is the very first message. Sorry with no answering, just not caring who knows because I wouldn't need help. That's what she said. I don't even think I told you that. Oh, she no. is indicating strongly that she's pregnant. Yes. And then she goes, I'm doing okay, just a lot of bad dreams. And I'm like, what? So I responded with, is it Rusty's? Because I don't care what kind of dreams <laughs> you're having. I just want to know if my brother is going to be a dad. Yeah. And she responded with no comment. That's what she said. No comment. So I said, so let me get this right. You posted something on Facebook before telling the father. I really do hope you enjoy our show because this is a great conversational piece. So I gave her a heads up. That was me being a professional and going, okay, I'm worked up. <laughs> and <laughs> literally thousands of people listen to this show. Last week, there were 13 different countries that downloaded our show. Okay, so tell us about the conversation. So it's going to happen. Okay, so tell us what happened I'm next. sorry, I'm getting angry. You're so mad right now. I am. She, she, because I just wanted her to go yes or no. That was I it. Know. I didn't want to so, talk to so her. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. Okay, so this is her response. She completely bypasses the fact that I was like, I'm going to talk about this on my show. So I'm okay, cool. Awesome. She said, what if the father doesn't care he is a father? But I never answered your question. Good night. What? What are you talking what? about? Yeah, Yes, you've never answered my question. Tell me. So I asked her, I said, I, I responded back and I said, look, two questions. Is Rusty the father? And two, if so, did you tell him before you posted this stuff on Facebook? She responded that back. That is all kinds of mess. <laughs> she, re she responded back. How could you tell a father if he don't talk? And still never answered. Good night. Been knocked out since seven. I don't even know what that means. And that's the last of the conversation. Is she saying she's like sl typing in her sleep? I don't know. I don't I know. I mean, what if you're means. not like asleep, like been no, I don't sleeping know. This since? girl is an astronaut. I she is so far out there. I, I can't even wrap my mind around it. So come to find out she's not. Yeah. She's um, not pregnant. Can we all say a collective thank God? Right. Um and she is. Uh, she has a friend, I guess, mm -hmm. maybe who is expecting. But clearly, there was. Some, I don't even know what to say. It's so weird. I'm like, this isn't supposed to happen in real life. This is like yeah. weird stuff you see on TV on like Maury, and you know, like it's crazy. Okay, like who does that? Let's make who this. does that? Hang on one second. Hang on one second. Hang on one second. So we did. <laughs> did we do the Patreon thing yet? Yeah. Okay, patreon.com slash Bob Katie Show. Patreon.com. Right. Uh, okay, let's make this interactive. Maybe. Oh my gosh. Like we haven't spilled enough of our dirty laundry yet. Listeners, if you didn't get the number the first time, take it now because I want you guys to call in and tell me what you think. Because maybe Katie and I are just angry. Are we overreacting? Because are we, we overreacting? Have a, it, yeah. We have an emotional attachment um, I'm just as protective over your brother as I am mine. I've known him since he was Reagan and Riley's size. Yes. I've watched him grow up. He's just as much my little brother, you know, as my own biological brother is. And I mean, obviously we have a whole history with having children. So that makes it a sensitive topic there. But who does this crap? Like who is like insinuating to yeah. be pregnant? Like, which, No, I think. I think there was a we don't know that we don't know that for sure we don't I, know that that's what she was I doing I, can I want only I want this is what I want listeners get your pen ready here comes speculate. here comes the phone number to the Bob and Katie show <laughs> hotline 910 
294-0951. Call in, leave a message, tell us what you think. We want to know. I'm not guaranteeing you that I'm going to play it live. I might, I might, depending on we how I feel might. next week. Uh, but I definitely want to hear you. So 910-294-0951. Can I tell you one more thing I was, I, I've done? Yeah. That you don't know? Oh my gosh. Why we you got so many secrets. We, this is a brand I thought new secret. Other everything. This secret's like a minute long. Who are this you? secret's a minute old. This is a brand new oh, secret. Okay. We're recording with the video camera for the first time. Uh-huh. And about 10 minutes ago, I ran out of water, but I kept forgetting. So I'd grab my cup and I'd go to take a swallow. And then I'd be, oh, there's not water. And then I was think, oh, the camera's watching. So I've forgotten that. So I would just pretend to drink. <laughs> It's, been, I did it like five times. I've you've pre- been just pretended fake to drink. Water? I have just for that camera right there. Oh my gosh! There you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this very intimate, detailed, too much information show. It's way too much information. I'm uncomfortable. Go hug somebody today. Is, is everybody else uncomfortable? I'm uncomfortable. Make everybody uncomfortable. Just hug a stranger. Go go spread some Ew. hugs. Find your laugh. Find your happy. This has been a Capcast Studios production. For more episodes and information, visit CapCastStudios.com.